Because when I think of the uh, Hamas attack on Israeli villages in October 7th, that was not barbaric chaos. No. That was brilliant tactical precision. Because when you do that to people who were ethnically cleansed from every place they've been to, with inquisition and pogroms and holocaust, you are resurfacing the demons that they have been seeing everywhere and have been trying to do anything to repress. You are cracking their thin shell of normality. When you push a trauma like that, that's the way to move an entire nation from reason to emotion. And when you act out of emotion, that's when you start making mistakes and walk right into the abyss. And I don't know why I was the only one seeing this that morning when people who I admired lost half their IQ. But I guess that's why I did anything in my power to detach myself of emotion so much that I became disgusted with it. And when my brother sat in front of the TV enraged, saying he wants to go into Gaza and fight, blaming him, me, for bringing him there, I made fun of him and called him a wuss. And when my mother started crying, her tears embarrassed me. Also, she's like a film actress, so that adds a layer of theatricality that's very irritating, but... I just started shouting at her. Stop fucking crying, mother. Stop crying. What did you expect? Did you think the matcha lattes and the sexy duplexes are going to protect us? Did you think the, the nice restaurants and the chain stores and the art galleries and the premieres and the venture capitals are going to make it go away 50 years? We've accepted this. The violence of the settlers, the land grabs, the humiliation, the system of inequality was just supposed to, I don't know what, go away the hundreds of thousands of young Palestinians that have stopped believing that something good can happen to them in this life so much that they had no other choice but to start believing in death. What did you accept? Stop fucking crying, mother. Stop crying. And I wish I could say that I came up to her later and hugged her and said I'm sorry, but I didn't. Later, we were sitting under the Parthenon, me and my brother, sundown above us, the crater of Western civilization. And um, next to us, an old woman with a foaming little dog who I'm pretty sure had rabies. And he asked me again, like, don't you want to come back with me? And I said, no. And he said, how? Is that possible? And I said, well, because I promised myself that when Jewish, Muslim, and evangelist fanatics are going to start their war of religion over a holy gas pipe, I'm not going to be the one that dies. And he said, yeah, well, but those were our people. They weren't fanatics. They were peace activists, the ones that were murdered there. There were artists, there were kids that went to a music festival. Some of them may have even been to our shows. There are people. And I said, yeah, they are our people. Our people chose to have a music festival 500 meters from a place where some people have no running water, 500 meters from a volcano that was always about to erupt over our little Pompeii. And maybe it's time for that illusion to stop. And you know, I was always the brave one. I was always the one dragging him to do political stuff with our art, more provocative, more brave to make statements and declarations. And he would be dragged after me like a little brother saying, hey man, I'm not a gangster, I'm not a partisan, I just, let's just fucking make music.
But this time he was being brave. And you know, he asked me again, don't you feel just a little bit like coming back with me and joining it? And so I looked deep down, I closed my eyes, looking for where the pain was coming from. Like an organ that once held all of my ideals, a phantom limb, my Zionist phantom limb. And I looked at him and said, see you, little brother. He uh, sent me this piece of music just a while ago. And, uh, this is what he's feeling right now, so let's listen to that. <laughs> 